what up, what up? My name is Mr. Parrish, and I'm presenting to you a video series called Back to Basics, in which I tell you how to do math problems, and at the end of the video, you're going to get hundreds on all your quizzes and tests in math. It's as simple as that. So this video goes over solving one-step equations. This is what one-step equations look like. Your job is to solve. You have to get one of these variables, whether it's A all the way to the left or Z in the middle or Q that looks like all the way to the right. Our job is to get that variable all by itself, completely all by itself. Now, this is what we do. I'm gonna do this problem, uh, the first one all the way to the left in red. Start it out in red. I'll probably switch colors as I move along. My job is to get A all by itself. Is A all by itself on one side of the equation or the equal sign? No, it's not. What's in the way? Well, that negative six is floating around in the way. How do I get something gone if it's in the way? See, again, I need to get that letter all by itself on the same side as the equal sign, but it's not. So how do I get rid of a negative six? Well, if I owe six dollars, negative six, how do I not owe it? Well, I get six dollars, positive six dollars. So what I do is I add six to both sides. Some people like to build this thing right here, the line. I'll do that once, and then I probably will never do it again. But what I did is I added six to both sides. The negative six and the positive six cancel each other out because again, if I owe $6, but I get $6, I'm good to go, I'm done. A drops down all by itself on the left side. On the right side, I have 13 plus six, which is 19. And so I ask myself, is A all by itself on the left side now? It sure is. A is all by itself. And on the right side is 19, and I'm Denzo. Denzo. My job is to get the letter all by itself. So let's take a look at the middle problem. I have Z, that's my letter, that's my variable. Is Z all by itself on the right side of the equal sign? No, it's not. What's in the way? Well, this negative eight is in the way. Okay, Z is not all by itself because that negative eight is in the way. So how do I get rid of a negative eight the same way I got rid of the negative six over here? I did the opposite of negative eight and I added eight to both sides. I'm not drawing that line because I don't like that line. Negative eight, positive eight cancel each other out because they become zero. Negative eight plus eight is zero. In the other problem, we just said, oh, I owe $8 and I get $8 or $6 and now I'm back to good. On the left side, I have negative three. I owe $3. Now I get $8, so after I pay off the $3, I have $5 left over. And on the right side, I have Z. I like to make my Z's fancy because then it'll look like a two. Also, I have Z on the right. I don't like writing out my answer as five equals Z, although I am done, and if I wanted to circle my answer, technically I'm not wrong. But if someone asks your name, you're not gonna say, oh, Mr. Parrish is my name. You're gonna say, my name is Mr. Parrish. So if someone says, what's Z? You're not gonna say five is Z. You're gonna say Z is five. Again, five is Z is an acceptable answer, but I just don't like it. Sorry, I don't like it. Let's move my face over there. And let's take a look at this Q problem. Ugh, fractions. Nobody likes fractions. Hmm, look at the denominators. What do you notice immediately? They're not the same. So I wonder if that's gonna be a problem. Also, what do I notice immediately? Q, is Q all by itself? No. What's in the way? Positive two thirds. What do I do when I have a positive two thirds in the way? A plus two thirds in the way. I subtract two thirds minus two thirds. See what I did? I crossed those out. Now what I have is I have one half minus two thirds. Can I subtract fractions when the denominators are different? I'll answer that for you. No. So I have to make the denominator on uh, both of them six. 
So what do I do? So let, let me rewrite this out. I have to do one half minus two thirds. I'm just rewriting it out. If you had scrap paper, you would run the scrap paper and rewrite it on scrap paper, but I don't have scrap paper because I don't need a computer. So what am I going to do? I have to get, uh, I have to get these denominators to become six. How do I do that? Let's multiply u by three and let's multiply u by three and let's multiply u by two and let's multiply u by two. When I do that, three times one is three, three times six is, three times two is six, whoopsie daisies, minus two times two is four, three times two is six. Can I combine them now? I sure can. What do I get after I combine them? Three minus four is negative one and six Remember, when you add or subtract fractions with the same denominator, you keep the denominator. So my answer is negative six. So let me clean all of this up. Let me clean all of this up. Bye, 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 bye. The answer was negative six. What's one half minus two thirds? Negative one sixth, of course, equals Q. Is that the way I like writing it out? No, I like my variable on the left. Remember, Q equals negative one over six. Dunzo. Not fun at all. Not fun at all. Well, for me, it was fun. Pew! All right, let's take a look at the left one. Is H all by itself on the left? No. What's in the way? Three's in the way. How is three in the way of H being alone? Three is being multiplied to H. So in order to get H all by itself, I have to do the opposite of multiply, which is divide. So I'm going to divide both sides, both sides by three. H equals 15 divided by three, which is five. Is H all by itself now? Yeah. So I'm done. Look at that. Easy. Is P all by itself here? No. What's in the way? Negative six. How is negative six in the way? It's being multiplied to P. So how do I get rid of it? Divide it. The opposite of multiply is divide. The opposite of multiply is divide. So we divide negative six from both sides. P equals, let me think, a positive divided by a negative is a negative, and 48 divided by six is eight. So my answer is negative eight. Is P all by itself now? Mm-hmm. So I'm done. Is N all by itself in this third problem? No. What's in the way? Divided by two. So how do I get rid of divided by two? Multiply both sides by two. So I like to wrap everything in parentheses. Wrap everything in parentheses. Two times divided by two is just crosses out, goes away. N's all by itself on the left now. Negative seven times positive two, let me think, a negative times a positive is a negative, and seven times two is 14. So, n equals negative 14. And if you're wondering, like, how do you know you did this right, sir? I, you're showing all this math stuff, and I don't know if I did it right. It's easy. Take a look at this green one. The green one, we had that answer of five. So three times H, no, three times five. I just found out that H is five. So is three times five 15? Sure is, which means I did it right. Wait. Is, key, is G all by itself? No. What's in the way? Three-fourths. How is three-fourths in the way? It's being multiplied. How do I get rid of being multiplied to G? I divide, of course. But a very, very, very important phrase that you need to know is, yeah, sure, you can divide by a fraction. But instead of dividing a fraction, multiply the reciprocal. 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 See, normally I divide here, but I don't want to divide a fraction. I'd rather multiply the reciprocal. 
So I have four thirds to be multiplied. How did I get four thirds? A reciprocal is when you take a fraction and flip it. Flip it real good. So three over four turned into four over three. That crosses out now and g is all by itself. How do I multiply a whole number like that to a fraction? Well, let me rewrite it out. I'm just gonna rewrite it out. I'm rewriting the right side out. But instead of calling it negative 12, I'm gonna call it negative 12 over one. You can turn any number into a fraction by putting it over one. So I have negative 12 over one times four over three. And when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across the top straight across the numerator and straight across the denominator, which is the bottom. So if I multiply straight across the top, I have negative 12 times four, which is uh, 48. And I have one times three, which is three. Now see if you can simplify. Can you do 48 divided by three? Sure. 48 divided by three is 16. So G, is actually equal to negative 16. Not easy, not easy. This is the same exact type of problem, just uglier because of the negatives and you know, whatever. Is that all by itself? No. What's in the way? Negative four over nine. How is negative four over nine in the way? It's being multiplied. How do you get rid of being multiplied? You divide. But instead of dividing a fraction, multiply the reciprocal. Instead of dividing a fraction, multiply the reciprocal. The reciprocal of negative four over nine is negative nine over four because all you do is flip it upside down. Negative nine over four. Those of you who are wondering what those dinging sounds are, my phone blowing up. I don't know what that means. Um, in this problem on the left, we had negative 12. And then we turn negative 12 over to one so we can multiply fractions. Over here, I have negative three. So why can't I just make it negative three over one? Okay. Negative three over one times negative nine over four. Let me see, a negative times a negative is a positive. So my answer is gonna be positive. Three times nine is 27. One times four is four. Can you do 27 divided by four? No. What does that mean? I'm done. Dunzo. So those are one step equations. Okay. Some people like calling them simple equations, but some of these are not simple. They just call it simple because it's one step. Okay. Uh, that should do it. Bye.